Good morning. Welcome to worship here at Grace Lutheran in Ely, Minnesota. We're so glad that you have joined us from wherever you may be gathering. Uh, hopefully it is from the comfort uh, of your own home. Uh, and hopefully you have grabbed a cup of hot tea or coffee as you uh, gather with, with us for worship this morning. Uh, a few uh, brief announcements uh, about, um, about worship. A uh, reminder, today is um, the second Sunday of Easter. Remember that uh, Easter is not just one day, but rather it is 50 days uh, for this season of, of time uh, during our church season. So it is the time where we certainly get to celebrate uh, the wonder and mystery of the resurrection of our Lord, as well as our own resurrection and the resurrection of creation all around us. Uh, to see the green of the grass and the leaves return, as well as despite uh, the snow that came down just a little bit here this morning in Ely, uh, creation is uh, beginning anew uh, as animals come back and come back from their winter slumber. Uh, so I hope uh, that you take some time uh, to uh, remember and celebrate the resurrection uh, in your own way and to remember that Christ is with you wherever you may go. Uh, also a reminder that uh, certainly you have found our Facebook page. Uh, don't forget that we also have our website, graceinely.org. Uh, there are a number of ways as well to uh, support the ministry that we do here uh, at Grace, both now as we uh, gather uh, virtually uh, through Facebook and through other means, uh, but also when we uh, return to uh, gathering again in person for meetings and worship and so many other uh, wonderful ministries that we do. Uh, you're welcome uh, to mail um, uh, offerings into the church, um, as well as to donate via Simply Giving or to make a donation uh, through our website. Uh, and if you have any questions, uh, you can send us a message here on Facebook or uh, to our uh, email, uh, gracelutheranely, mn at gmail.com. We thank you so much for, for supporting us, whether through prayers or through your offerings um, now and through uh, your time and your ministry uh, and uh, through your continued offerings uh, after, once we have that opportunity to be in person uh, later on, um, whenever that might uh, occur. So we remember that as we gather for worship this morning, we gather as we live in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Almighty and eternal God, the strength of those who believe and the hope of those who doubt, may we who have not seen have faith in you and receive the fullness of Christ's blessing, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Our Gospel reading this morning comes to us from the Gospel of John, chapter 20. Beginning at verse 19. When it was evening on that day, the first day of the week, and the doors of the house where the disciples had met were locked for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. When he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. But Thomas, who was called the twin, one of the twelve, was not with, with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see the mark of the nails in his side, and put my finger in the mark of the nails and my hand in his side, I will not believe. A week later his disciples were again in the house, and Thomas was with them. Although the doors were shut, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here and see my hands. Reach out your hand and put it in my side. Do not doubt, but believe. 
Thomas answered him, My Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, Have you believed because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen me, and yet have come to believe. Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not written in this book. But these are written so that you may come to believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that through believing you may have life in his name. This is the Gospel of our Lord. Dear sisters and brothers in Christ, grace, mercy, and peace are yours. From God our Father and our risen Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. I can think of no more appropriate Gospel reading than the passage that has been set before us today. While this reading from John's Gospel comes to us every year on the second Sunday after Easter, this story, the story of Jesus appearing to the disciples and then to Thomas, fits our current collective experience perfectly. The disciples are anxious, waiting for new life to come. They are living in fear uncertain of what is to come next. They are behind the locked doors, uncertain of the consequences that await them. Yet, Jesus comes to them. Resurrection comes to them. Peace comes to them. Peace which surpasses all understanding. This is what the resurrection of Jesus brings to the disciples and brings to us. No matter if we are behind locked doors, living in fear, living in uncertainty, resurrection and new life finds a way to come to us. Jesus finds a way to come to us. As Jesus does come, just as he promised he would, he brings that very peace he brought to the disciples, to Mary at the tomb, to those gathered the first time he appeared, and ultimately to Thomas. Our collective experience at this time might be more like Thomas, whose faith demands that Jesus show up, demands that Jesus show that resurrection is possible what resurrection is all about, and demands the very peace he longs for, and that we long for, today. In John's Gospel, just like that in Matthew, Mark, and Luke, the women are the first witnesses to the empty tomb, and become the first preachers of Jesus' resurrection. It is Mary Magdalene who is first to the tomb on Easter morning, followed quickly by Peter and the other disciple, who do not fully believe the news that Jesus is risen. It is also Mary Magdalene who becomes the first to experience the risen Christ there at the tomb. As Mary is weeping outside the tomb, it is Jesus who comes, says her name, and is immediately recognized by Mary. She then goes to tell the disciples once again, boldly proclaiming, I have seen the Lord. Here now, beginning at verse 19, the disciples are obviously afraid. They have not seen Jesus since he was arrested and crucified. But they know that he was not in the tomb where he had been laid because Mary and the two disciples saw the empty tomb, but the others did not fully know that he had been raised. They were hiding for fear that they may be arrested as well. It is in the midst of their fear that Jesus appears and says to them, Peace be with you. Jesus knows they are filled with fear. In their time of uncertainty, he offers peace that only he can bring. After these disciples have seen the hands of Jesus, and the place where he was pierced in the side, they then receive what amounts to the Great Commission in John's Gospel 
As Jesus says to them, peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. Jesus has now given them the task of telling the world about his resurrection, the ability to forgive sins, and they now receive the Holy Spirit. Notice once again, even as Jesus is sending these disciples out into the world, he offers them comfort and peace they so desperately need in order to follow the calling that Christ has for them in the world, to be that body of Christ. Here's the problem. Not all of the disciples are there to be able to experience and to see Jesus. Thomas was not there. Thomas has missed out on that incredible resurrection encounter with the crucified and risen Lord. Thomas has missed out on seeing the wounds in the hands of Jesus and in his side. Thomas has missed out on receiving the Holy Spirit, like his fellow disciples have. Thomas has missed out on Christ. So as the disciples gather together with Thomas, they make the same proclamation to Thomas that Mary did to them. We have seen the Lord. We know Thomas's response. Unless I see the mark of the nails in his hand and put my finger in the mark of the nails and my hand in his side, I will not believe. This statement and situation has led Thomas to being called Doubting Thomas, as though having doubt and questions about an unreasonable and unfathomable event without having experienced it for himself, is somehow wrong. Thomas wants what Mary has received. Thomas wants what the other disciples have received. Thomas wants what we now want. Thomas wants to see the Lord. Thomas wants to experience the risen Christ. Thomas wants to touch the scars of his teacher and of his Lord. Thomas wants to know and to experience love and resurrection for himself. The kind of resurrection that not only changes you, but changes those around you upon hearing such an idle tale. Thomas needs what we need. To experience, to see, and to proclaim the crucified and risen Christ is active in our lives in love, mercy, and compassion. Thomas needs to know that the grief that has kept him in his own tomb is no longer that which binds him, that which keeps him from living a new and resurrected life of his own. Thomas needs to know that the tomb is indeed empty, that his Redeemer lives, and that his heartache his struggle and the questions that he has will continue to have in his life are validated as he seeks to encounter the risen Lord, ultimately so that he can have a resurrection of his own. Then about a week later, Jesus shows up once again. This time, Thomas is present. Once again, notice that as Jesus shows up, the first words that Jesus offers to Thomas and to the disciples gathered with him, peace be with you. Jesus then invites Thomas to do the very thing his faith demands, to see, to touch, and to experience the resurrection for himself. Notice Jesus does not critique nor criticize Thomas. Jesus rather invites Thomas to receive the new life he so desperately needs. Right now, and I would suggest long before and long after our present social distancing situation, we are like Thomas. We long to experience the resurrection of our Lord. We long to experience the very peace that comes 
with resurrection and new life. Our promise this day is that Jesus brings this experience to us, little by little, piece by piece. Sometimes resurrection and new life come painstakingly slow, but resurrection comes nonetheless. New life comes to us behind locked doors. Peace comes to us even behind locked doors. Resurrection comes to us even behind locked doors. Jesus comes to us even behind locked doors. We, like Thomas, long for that resurrection experience. We long for Jesus coming to us and making his presence known to us. We long for new life outside the walls of our homes. We long for the peace Christ has promised us. That peace, new life, and resurrection come to us each day, reminding us that while we are still at home, while we continuously wash our hands and long for a new reality, Jesus is with you. Resurrection is with you. God's peace is with you. The very peace which surpasses all understanding and which guards your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus, our risen Lord and Savior. May you experience this peace today. And may you know this peace today. Thanks be to God, and peace be with you. Amen. Let us join together in the prayer which our Lord Jesus has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. As you go on your way, may you receive God's blessing. May the road rise to meet you, May the wind be always at your back. May the sun shine warm upon your face. The rains fall soft upon your fields. And until we meet again, may God hold you in the palm of his hand. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Once again, we thank you so much for gathering with us here digitally, uh, wherever you may be gathering with us. Uh, we hope that uh, our service today uh, has been a blessing to you, and I would encourage you to share it uh, with someone or with a few other friends of yours, whether they're uh, members here at Grace or whether they're friends or acquaintances uh, of yours, wherever they may be. Uh, we certainly hope that um, it continues to, to give you strength, that our, our risen Lord gives you that peace uh, that we so desperately desire in these days. As we continue to live in our social distancing world, know that staying home and staying safe is what God has called you to do for the sake of loving your neighbor, for the sake of keeping others safe. This is what we are called to do today. This is what the church looks like here, now, in this place. Know that what you are doing is ministry in and of itself. And for that, we give thanks. And we give thanks for you. Thanks be to God and God's blessings to you as you go on your way.